Hi, I'm Jeremy, and welcome to another episode of Practical IT. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at different network attached storage or NAS options. While I started in the NAS, um, while I started using NAS devices by building my own out of spare parts, I have now. While I started out by using spare parts to build my own NAS, and that was a great learning experience, I do now own several commercial NAS boxes. Let's take a look at a few of the options available, and then we will return to some of the build-it-yourself options. The first NAS box I bought was made by Thekus, or Thekus, not sure really how you pronounce that. And for the time, when I bought it, it was a pretty decent little box. It was a four bay unit, and for what I wanted, it did a nice job. The problem is that after about three years, I was one day no longer able to access the web-based administrative panel. Fortunately, since the RAID array in this box was built on Linux software RAID, I was able to take out the four drives, hook them to a standard PC box, rebuild the array, and take my data off those drives. The next box I bought was made by Synology. Synology is known for making fairly inexpensive NAS boxes while providing a very intuitive graphical uh, web-based graphical interface. You can find more about Synology at Synology.com. They offer some really compelling features. Neck and neck with Synology in market share and mind share is QNAP. Wanting to keep things as close as possible with my Synology box, I have a two-bay QNAP uh, NAS, and I have been very impressed with the performance of this. The graphical interface is web-based, and it is very similar in concept to that of the Synology. You can also find some pretty decent sales on the QNAP boxes when you go to buy one of these. Next up is Buffalo. Buffalo is more known or better known for making DDWRT based home routers but they do also have a line of link stations and Terra stations, which are their NAS boxes. I have one of the previous generation link station 400 series. I believe the model number is 420D. Uh, as you can see from their webpage now, these are discontinued. Um, The Buffalo unit, I, based upon my experiences with the Buffalo unit, I have found the features to be very small in comparison. I don't like it. Compared to the QNAP and Synology boxes, the link station model that I have just could not compete. 
not only were there fewer features available in their web interface, there were not as many updates done to this particular model. The two Synology, uh, the QNAP and the Synology box that I have are still receiving updates to this day. Obviously, that was not the case with Buffalo, and that has not received an update in a year or more. Moving on into a couple that I don't have first-hand experiences with. Drobo came onto the market uh, while I was still in college. I have been watching this company fairly closely since then and they do have a very impressive lineup of NAS and direct attached storage boxes. The big thing that sets Drobo apart is that they use their own customized versions of RAID, which allows you to add different sized drives and it will still add space for you to store things. While this can be seen as a benefit, there are also drawbacks to this particular solution. Depending on your needs, a Drobo may very well fill the void for more storage space. The last one we'll take a look at of the commercial boxes is Asus Store. As you can probably guess, this is a subsidiary of Asus, which makes a lot of motherboards and PCs and things. <clears throat> Asus Store is a relative newcomer, but they have matched or are very close to matching QNAP and Synology feature-wise, and they have come onto the market at a disruptive price point. While I don't currently have an ASUS store box, this is something that I definitely want to look into in the future. All right, so let's get off the commercial boxes and let's go back to some do-it-yourself options again. Starting with FreeNAS. FreeNAS is where it all started for me. At the time, FreeNAS was a pre 1.0 version. Now they're up to version 10, I believe. FreeNAS is based on BSD Unix and not on Linux. And while that's neither a good nor a bad thing, um, FreeNAS is based on BSD Unix. It is open source. The new maintainers of the FreeNAS project, <clears throat> the new maintainers of the FreeNAS project have added many features but have moved it away from its roots where it was able to run on fairly meager hardware. By upgrading to newer versions of the BSD base and adding features such as ZFS, it has propelled FreeNAS into a different category 
which makes it less suitable for home use and do-it-yourselfers simply because you have to have more hardware and higher-end hardware to run it. Moving on, we have NAS for free. NAS for free is also based on BSD Unix. And instead of rewriting the entire user interface, it has extended the original free NAS interface. NAS for free is still a viable option for people who want a do-it-yourself solution and not have necessarily all the features and hardware requirements of the new versions of FreeNAS. On the Linux front, we've previously taken a look at Open Media Vault, so I'm not going to cover that in detail here. But there is also Open Filer. Open Filer is another do-it-yourself, roll your own on your own hardware solution. The one thing that has me a little skeptical about the future of this project is that it's still showing that it's using the 2.6 Linux kernel. And if we move over here to Wikipedia, we can see that as of this recording, 4.11.4 is the latest stable version, and 4.12 is the current preview version. With this in mind, I would not personally recommend OpenFiler for production use in a company. If you are doing a home project mainly for learning, then it may still be a viable option for you to set up OpenFiler. And moving on to our last item here, we have Unraid by LimeTech. Unraid also has a Linux base, but they have added some pretty significant features to this, which make it interesting. Also, while Unraid has a Linux base, this is not a purely open source project. You do have to pay for a license. Now, if we look at our pricing page here, you still can get an unlimited attached storage trial for 30 days. After that, you will need to purchase a license. And even if you are building a small box, $59 for a license is not a bad price. Where Unraid has traditionally excelled is that it has offered Drobo-like features, meaning that you can take drives of unmatched sizes and put them in the same box and have usable space. This may be a viable option for you if you are building your own system and want to use some of the features they have available. Again, depending on your hardware, you may be able to take care of some of the virtualization features that they have built in. On that note, this is Jeremy Like signing off for
all of these projects and commercial products have their merits. It would be difficult for me to make a recommendation without knowing your exact needs. So my advice at the end of the day is to look at what your needs are and then look at what capabilities each of the options offer and compare this with the budget you have available. Doing so, you can make an informed decision on what the best option is for you. On that note, we've reached the end of another practical IT video. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please feel to like, subscribe, and leave comments below. I'll see you next time. Have a great day.